Gaijin have gone and done it again, haven't they? Yeah, let's talk about this. So what is going on guys, it is your boy Gary G Gaming here and another dev blog has come out and initially I was kind of excited for this aircraft and then I realised that it doesn't really make much sense for them to add something like this. You see, I think last patch they added in the Yak-23 and that thing has basically ruined a 7.0 jet matchmaking, like at least for me, I can't play the F-84 anymore because that plane is just retarded. And then you've got something like this. I can guarantee that this aircraft will not be a 9.0, simply because its maximum speed is only 1,070 or 1,060, I think. And because of that lack of speed, they will not make this plane a 9.0. I, I thoroughly believe that. And honestly, it just confuses me. Why would you go ahead and add another top tier jet when there are so many other aircraft that could be introduced that, you know, haven't been introduced? Like, we've been waiting for more BF 110s for four years now. We've been waiting for the Heinkel 177 Grief. I remember one comment in the dev blog actually said it would make sense to add the Heinkel 177 because it is update 1.77 or whatever. But no, they've done none of that. They've just added another top-tier jet. And this is literally a single-use aircraft. They've produced one of these. And it, it doesn't even... It's an interesting aircraft, but it just doesn't really... Why do we need this? What, what, what purpose... Like, what does this add to the game? Because we've already got the MiG-15s. We've already got the LA-15s. And the LA-174 or whatever it's called, which is that special reward vehicle. We've already got the Yak-30. What's the point of having this aircraft as well? I don't understand it. So as is usual with dev blogs, let's read the text that Guardian have provided top to bottom. So the LA-200 is a Soviet prototype jet interceptor that was developed to carry a new type of radar system. Although just one of several competing designs, the LA-200 was never mass produced. But now, War Thunder pilots will be able to prove the merits of the LA-200 when it soars in War Thunder in update 1.77. In War Thunder, the LA-200 will become available as a rank 5 jet fighter in the Soviet aviation tree. Although the LA-200 never left its prototype stage and didn't see active service, War Thunder pilots will be able to test out this unusual looking fighter jet against its contemporaries. The LA-200 has an unusually long fuselage, uncommon for fighter jets of the era, designed to accommodate its two Klimov VK-1 turbojets. One turbojet is located on the front of the LA-200 and the other is mounted on its rear. An interesting aspect of the LA-200 design is the placement of the front engine exhaust, which is underneath the fuselage instead of behind it. Conversely, the rear engine exhaust is fitted directly behind, as is far more common for fighter jets. Regardless of its unusual design characteristics, the LA-200's dual engines enable it to reach speeds exceeding 1,000 km per hour. In addition, the LA-200 was well armed. Three 37mm M37 auto cannons were installed in the nose section, two on the right hand side and one on the left. With such heavy armament, even a short, well placed shot is more than enough to send an opponent spiralling into a fiery, fiery doom. However, there's a price to pay with such high caliber weapons, limited ammunition. Don't shoot carelessly, make every shot count. The LA-200 is on final approach and is expected to arrive in a War Thunder 1.77 update. Stay tuned to find out more. Until then. Okay, so after Gaijin's sales pitch, you know the usual aspects. I'm going to do some historical stuff about the aircraft, then I'm going to do a bit of speculation, or in this case, some harsh judgment on Gaijin's part. So here we go. So essentially after the Second World War, the Soviet Union captured a bunch of B-29s, which they later reversed into Tu-4s. However, they realized that the United States could strike them at any range. They could literally hit them from the United States and hit targets in the Soviet Union with nuclear or conventional ordnance. So 
They had a requirement for a high-performance night and poor weather interceptor. Lavotkin, Sukhoi, and McCoy and Garuvic all developed designs to meet this requirement. The LA-200 was uh, Lavotkin's design, SU-15 was Sukhoi's design, and I-320 was uh, McCoy and Garuvic's design. To me, the aircraft is relatively unremarkable, except for three facts. One, the aircraft has two engines mounted in tandem, sort of one forward, one behind. The second fact is that unlike most Soviet fighters of the time, this thing actually had side-by-side -side seating. And the third fact is that this thing had a radar called what I'm assuming is an NII-17 radar, which is made of thorium, a thorium centimeter wave band, which is capable of detecting a B-29 at a range of 20 kilometers. However, I'm being told here that the radar was absolute trash. The radar was also fitted in the center of the air intake. The aircraft first flew in 1949, but it took them until 1953 to get the radar working. By then, the aircraft's performance was considered inadequate and the whole project was scrapped. What many people will probably be wondering is its rate of climb, which listed here is 27.78 metres per second. Its service ceiling was 15,000 metres, or 15,550 metres to be exact, and it also is armed with three 37mm cannons. Sorry. Now, I don't know why they've decided to add this gas. Like, I mean, there's so many other aircraft you could have added to the game that would have actually provided some kind of, you know, blending or some kind of, I don't know, something interesting. Maybe a rank six line of attack jet, but instead they've just added another, what I'm going to assume to be an 8.0 Russian attack jet. Like, not not attack jet, like just another Kai climb rate interceptor for the Russians, like real original. I, I don't understand why this plane is being introduced. It's Some have compared it to the Sky Knight, but this thing looks like it's going to flog the absolute shit out of the Sky Knight, so I, I don't know why, honestly. But yeah, I don't know, at least we have another interesting looking Russian swept, swept wing flying engine. I don't know. I mean, even though this thing's a prototype, I'll bet you any money that they will, like, shoehorn a way to fit ordnance onto this thing just to make it even worse. I mean, 337mm cannons is pretty damn good. It's not the heaviest armament in the game, but it's still pretty decent. Like, that would provide a pretty hefty burst mass. Someone, pro someone could probably calculate that. I don't know. But that's like having 340mm cannons in your nose, really. Other than that, I mean, if they wanted to introduce this aircraft, they could have smokescreened it by, like... Having the Leopard 2 one day, next day, I don't know, prototype Abrams, and then put this in on the same day so that people aren't paying attention to it. But no, they had to put in their stupid engine updates, and then, oh, look, we're getting a new Russian top tier. How fun. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to this, honestly. But it's been your boy Garage Gaming here, and I'll catch you guys next time. See ya.